OMG, let's do the chain rule with me. It's gonna be cool, you'll see. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about backpropagation details, part 2. Note. This stack quest assumes that you have already seen Backpropagation Details Part 1. If not, check out the quest. The link is in the description below. Since you have already seen Backpropagation Details Part 1, you already know that in this stack quest we're going to go totally bonkers with the, the chain, chain rule, rule and gradient, gradient descent. descent. In order to optimize all of the weights and biases in this neural network, so that it can fit a green squiggle to this data. Bam! Note the derivatives that we derived in part 1 for bias B sub 3 and weights W sub 3 and W sub 4 do not change. So we can just plug these derivatives into the gradient descent algorithm. However, now we need to derive the derivatives of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to W sub 1, B sub 1, W sub 2, and B sub 2. Let's start with the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to W sub 1. Remember, the neural network starts by multiplying input sub i by W sub 1. Then it adds the bias B sub 1, and that gives us an x-axis coordinate for the activation function that we call x sub 1 comma i. We then plug x sub 1 comma i into the activation function, and that means plugging x sub 1 comma i into this equation because we are using the soft plus activation function. And that gives us a y-axis value of y sub 1 comma i. And remember, y sub 1 comma i times w sub 3 gives us the final blue curve, which we add to the final orange curve, and the bias b sub 3, to get the green squiggle and the predicted values. Lastly, remember that we use the predicted values to calculate the sum of the squared residuals. Now, let's clear the screen and spread out the equations. Now we can see that the sum of the squared residuals are linked to W sub 1, first by the predicted values, then Y sub 1 comma I, the Y-axis values that come from the activation function. And lastly, X sub 1 comma I, the X-axis values that are input for the activation function. Thus, the chain rule tells us that the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to W sub 1 is the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to the predicted values times the derivative of the predicted values with respect to Y sub 1 times the derivative of Y sub 1 with respect to X sub 1 times the derivative of X sub 1 with respect to W sub 1. As we've seen before, the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to the predicted values is the sum of negative 2 times the observed minus the predicted values. Now the derivative of the predicted values with respect to y sub 1 is w sub 3 for the first term and 0 for the other two terms. So the derivative of the predicted values with respect to y sub 1 is w sub 3. Now we need to solve for the derivative of y sub 1 with respect to x sub 1. This requires knowing that the derivative of the log of z is 1 divided by z, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The chain rule tells us to take the derivative of the stuff outside of the parentheses, the log function, times the derivative of the stuff inside the parentheses, 1 plus e to the x. If we let z equal 1 plus e to the x, then the derivative of the stuff outside is 1 divided by 1 plus e to the x. And the derivative of the stuff inside is 0 for the first term, since it does not include x, 
plus e to the x for the second term. And this whole thing simplifies to e to the x divided by 1 plus e to the x. Lastly, the derivative of x sub 1 with respect to w sub 1 is the input value for the first term plus 0 for the second term because it does not include w sub 1, which simplifies to just the input values. Plugging in the derivatives gives us a big fancy equation, or BFE for short. Hooray! We solved for the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to the first weight, w sub 1. Note, keep in mind that the x's in the e to the x terms are the individual x-axis coordinates for the activation function for each input value. Bam! Now let's find the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to b sub 1. The good news is that the exact same equations that linked the sum of the squared residuals to w sub 1 also link the sum of the squared residuals to b sub 1. Thus, the chain rule tells us that the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to b sub 1 is the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to the predicted values times the derivative of the predicted values with respect to y sub 1 times the derivative of y sub 1 with respect to x sub 1 times the derivative of x sub 1 with respect to b sub 1. And the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to the predicted values is the same as before. And so is the derivative of the predicted values with respect to y sub 1. And the derivative of y sub 1 with respect to x sub 1 is also the same as before. And the only thing different is the derivative of x sub 1 with respect to b sub 1, which is 0 for the first term, since it does not include b sub 1, plus 1 for the second term, which simplifies to just 1. Plugging in the derivatives gives us another big fancy equation. Double BAM! We've solved for the derivatives of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to w sub 1 and b sub 1. Now we need to solve for the derivatives of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to w sub 2 and b sub 2. The good news is that the only difference is that instead of using the top node in the hidden layer, we use the bottom node. And that means now we multiply input sub i by w sub 2 and add b sub 2. And that gives us x sub 2 comma i, which we plug into the activation function to get y sub 2 comma i. Then we multiply y sub 2 comma i by w sub 4 to get the final orange curve, which we add to the final blue curve, and b sub 3 to get the green squiggle. And the green squiggle gives us the predicted values, which gives us the residuals and the sum of the squared residuals. Thus, just like before, the sum of the squared residuals are linked to w sub 2. And we use the chain rule to derive the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to w sub 2. Now, calculating the derivatives is just like before, but with slightly different parameter names. And plugging in the derivatives gives us another BFE. So, in the end, this is the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to w sub 2. Similarly, we can derive the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to b sub 2. Now we just combine these derivatives with all of the others and use gradient descent to optimize all of the parameters simultaneously. First, we initialize the weights and biases. In this example, we pick numbers from a standard normal distribution for the weights. Oh no, it's a technical detail alert. I think this is the first time that's ever happened. Just so you know, using a standard normal distribution is just one of many ways to initialize weights. Small bam. 
Now we initialize the bias terms to zero because bias terms frequently start at zero. Now, starting with the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to w sub one, we expand the summation. Then we plug in the observed values and the values predicted by the green squiggle. Remember, we get the predicted values on the green squiggle by running the dosages through the neural network. Now we can plug in the current value for W sub three and the X axis coordinates for the activation function in the top node, X sub one comma I. Lastly, we plug in the input values. Then we do the math and get 0 0.76. Then we solve for all of the other derivatives. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. And then we use each derivative to calculate a step size and a new value. Then we update the parameters in the neural network and repeat until the predictions no longer improve very much or we meet some other criteria. Now let's check out a fancy animation that shows the gradient descent in action. These gray dots represent the data that we are using to train the neural network. And the orange and blue curves represent the orange and blue curves. And the green squiggle, which fits the data so poorly that it's going off the screen, represents the sum of the orange and blue curves plus B sub three. Now, watch how gradient descent fits the green squiggle to the data after 450 steps. Bam! We went totally bonkers with the, the chain, chain rule and gradient, gradient descent. descent. And we finally have a neural network that fits a green squiggle to the data. Triple, Triple bam. bam! Now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, check out the StatQuest study guides at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!